Welcome everyone to Astro's educational webinar series. We are the Association for Short-Term Rental Homeowners. My name is Heidi Hendrickson. I'm one of the co-founders of Astro. And today I am joined by Alexander Karavitis from Host Hub, formerly Think B&B. Welcome, Alex. Heidi, thank you for having me. We are crazy excited to hear about all of the secrets you're going to share with us today. Uh, and I'm hoping, I'm calling in from a snowy Bend, Oregon, April morning. So I'm guessing it's a little bit nicer where you're located. It's a sunny day today here. So we're glad about that. Perfect. Well, real quick, I know we have a quick 30 minute segment here, so we want to jump right in and get to all the good juicy information you're going to share. Um, but prior to that, for anyone new joining, I wanted to just give a quick overview of who Astro is and what we do. And then we'll also do a brief overview of Host Hub and what your services are. And then we'll dive right into all these fantastic secrets. So uh, real quickly, Astro is the Association for Short-Term Rental Homeowners. We found when we joined Astro in early 2020, that the industry was very fragmented and our goal was to provide an unbiased neutral field for successful short-term rental homeowners offering unbiased information uh, safe legal profitable and successful resources for those individuals as well as for their guests and then connecting them to the vendors in our industry so we did find that about 70 percent of vacation rental homeowners self-manage which is a pretty amazing statistic and they didn't have a whole lot of resources to guide them with best practices, with education, and even support with regulatory challenges when they do come up from time to time. So that's what Astro is all about. Um, if you wanna to bounce to the next slide, please, Alex. We created a very easy to use uh, membership community. You can see a quick snapshot of our mobile version right there. And everything within our community that you can join, by the way, for free as a homeowner host is organized by topics of conversation. You can also drill into all of our upcoming events that are both Astro focused, as well as many of our, our vendors and corporate members. And then we do have a lot of featured articles supplied by our, our corporate members as well. So there's a ton of great information. You can connect with other Astro members based on your geographical region or over top posts, topics, like I said. So it's a really great resource, easy to join. We do have six e-learning courses as well. And our premier hosts, which is $100 a year, get full access to all of those six courses from marketing to technology to revenue management. And then additionally, we have many member perks and benefits for those premier hosts to take advantage of. So feel free to check out astro.org and uh, join our community. We'd love to have you in there. And with that, Alex, I'm going to turn this over to you and talk a little bit about Host Hub, and then we'll get into those secrets a little bit. That's great. Thank you very much, Heidi. So uh, quick intro. Uh, my name is Alex. I'm the co-founder of uh, Host Hub. We were previously called SingBNB. In this photo, you will see me with my co-founder Petros. He's a CTO of the company. We founded SingBNB, now Host Hub, in 2017, and uh, we've since grown quite a bit. We currently have uh, many thousands of homes uh, scattered in more than 50 countries. Our number one country is the United States, so more than 50% of our customers are in the U.S., and uh, number two country is Greece. We are from Greece and we operate mainly from Greece. So that's why it's uh, country number two. Then it's the UK and you will find all the English speaking countries in the top 10. So we have a lot of uh, hosts and some managers in countries like Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Ireland, Canada. All those countries have uh, homes that we uh, are managed through our software. So uh, what is Host Hub? Host Hub is an all-in-one software for vacation rental hosts. Our customer base are mainly hosts, uh, owners, or small managers with five to 10 homes. We do have some larger ones, but our sweet spot and where we're better at is at the uh, lower end of the, of the market. So owners with a couple of homes or small managers. Our uh, property, our um, software is specifically designed to be very easy to use. And that's the main thing that differentiates us from the competition. Everything is so easy. It's easier than using Airbnb. So that was our main focus when we started building Host Hub. Um, there are various different uh, features and uh, tools that uh, you can find. The, the number one and most important is the channel manager. This is the core of our product. It's what we started with. So for those that don't know what a channel manager is, it's the software that makes sure that you never get a double booking. It keeps all your calendars and all your channels synchronized. So if you're on Airbnb, Verbo, TripAdvisor, Expedia, and more channels, 
The channel manager makes sure that you never get a double booking and that all the calendars are synchronized. We also synchronize rates. So you only put rates once in our software and then it goes everywhere, now, everywhere else. And uh, there are a few other pro products that you can see on this page. I don't want to expand too much on this right now because I want to focus on the juice, which is the 10 plus one secrets that the large property managers do and they don't want you to know because that means that you would be better in your job and they don't want that. So um, before I dive into the first one, quick intro, uh, because we have thousands of uh, users using our system, many of them are managers and we daily, uh, we see what they do every day. We talk with them. We, uh, we, have, we dive deep into data uh, and analytics about what they do and how they operate we have come to understand what works best from the stuff that they do. So what I did is I collected 10 things that you should do and one that you shouldn't, uh, which is the last one. Uh, and uh, I will try to explain how they do it and how each one of these tips will help you either increase your bookings and revenue or save time from daily operations and save money from uh, things that could go wrong. So number one, show your direct booking discount everywhere. Uh, you will see that in this presentation, I do not have the obvious things that every uh, owner or manager should do. Um, it's obvious that if you want to be serious about your work and uh, your uh, operations, you need to have your own website. You need to attract direct bookings for many reasons, not only to save money from the commissions that the channels uh, take from you, but also to create your own brands, to control the experience and, and for many other reasons. So for those of you that do have their own website and are promoting their property online and uh, accepting bookings online, make sure you show the, the discount that you offer compared to the other channels as much as possible. So not just on the website, like the example on the right. So on this example, the discount is shown on every page below the logo of the website, but also it's written in the title of the page. So when someone is Googling for your name or the name of your property, he will see in the description your discount, and this will attract clicks. So from the moment that for this specific uh, home, we added the 15% cheaper in the title, uh, we got 15% increase in bookings because people saw that while you were browsing on Google, clicked on it, and then came to our website. So that's the first tip. Tip number two, um, all of us have come across a case where we might get a customer, a guest, that we believe that for various reasons, they might not be very satisfied and we fear that they might be ready to leave a bad review. So there's not much we can do about that except prepare, or, you know, prepare for uh, um, the next uh, uh, guest by fixing any problems that that guest might have or try to be better next time. Or in some cases, there's nothing we did wrong. It's just a grumpy customer. We can't do anything. However, one thing you can do is try to delay the, the uh, review as much as possible. So how do we do that? First of all, if you, if you leave a, a review right away on Airbnb, he will get notified to leave his review. And that will expedite the, expedite the, uh, the process and he will re leave his review uh, real fast. You don't want that because you want to give him time to cool down and whatever you know, thing made him feel uncomfortable or made him want to leave a, a low review, uh, it might fade away. So the longer you wait for the customer to leave a review, if you're expecting a bad review, the better for you. So um, do not leave a review uh, right away so that you have time for him. You don't give him the opportunity to leave his uh, real fast. And also if you have any automations, that uh, send automated emails asking for reviews, disable them for that customer. And that will uh, most times help you get a, a less bad review. So if he was prepared to leave a two-star review or a three-star review, you might get a four-star review. And that makes the world of a difference. Even one star can make a, hu a huge difference. And uh, there's a tip about uh, Airbnb uh, scoring system uh, later on in the presentation. Uh, by the way, Heidi, if you want to jump in into any of these and add your feedback or ask anything, please do, right? So uh, just let me know. Sure. Thanks, Alex. I'm curious about that one really quickly. Uh, does that apply to VRBO if you're listed on that site as well? Or is this specifically just for Airbnb? So the, it, for every channel, no matter where the customer came from, 
if they have a platform to leave a review and you believe that they might be disappointed, make and do anything you can to make the time uh, as long as possible, to make him leave the review as far after the checkout as possible, because that increases the chance that he will cool off and leave a, you know, a more mild review than the one that he had initially when he was leaving the books. Yeah, that's fantastic um, feedback. And we even got a comment in our chat saying, thank you for that feedback, letting your guests cool off a little bit if they had a less than stellar stay for one reason or another. So that's yeah. perfect. I really try to gather 10 things that are not on the beaten path and are things that you will not find easily when you try to find tips for vacation and owners. I hope the rest ones will be on par with this one. So number three, don't strive for absolute five stars. It might sound counterintuitive, but there's a reason. So I keep seeing on Facebook groups and on host forums, everyone is you know, uh, devastated when they get a four-star review and they strive to get five stars always. That is not necessarily good. Uh, there, it's much better to have a 4.9 than a 5.0. So if you have a series of five-star reviews and then you get a four-star reviews, be happy. It, and it increases the reliability of the review. Uh, five-star reviews and not, not, not five, uh, just five, but 5.0, wherever uh, a decimal is shown, 5.0 is a bad number because it makes whoever is seeing that believe that this is phony, that it's not true. It can't be true, the absolute 5.0. A 4.9 shows much larger uh, reliability. It makes the guests feel more comfortable that this is an actual real number and not something that's fixed or made up. So if you have a lot of five-star reviews and then you get a four one, don't worry, it will just bring 5.0 down to 4.9, which is better based on research that has been done. Uh, we, uh, and we would like to thank our partner, uh, Christoph from reviews.com. It's a, a plugin that gathers reviews from all your websites that you can show them on your, on your website. Uh, and uh, he has you know, loads of data that he's uh, looking into about reviews every day. And this, speak, uh, this tip comes from him. So, Number four, most, uh, you know, most of us have needed one point or another to come into contact with the Airbnb support. And uh, we, see every, we see it every day, uh, people uh, being disappointed by the level of support. Uh, they, uh, they try to find people to help them and they can't. Uh, the, uh, they have a serious problem and the, the support will not get back to them with any meaningful information, just you know, a canned response that won't help the hosts at all. In those cases, we have found that mentioning Airbnb or Brian Chesky on Twitter can help a lot. Eight times out of 10, if you uh, just go to Twitter with your problem and mention Airbnb, Airbnb help or B Chesky, which is the uh, handle of Brian himself, which of course he does not uh, manage his own, he has a team that manages it, uh, you will probably get uh, a reply from Airbnb help telling you to send them a direct message with your email and they will look into the problem and get back to you. And most times it will be a much better support experience than you would get if you just went through the uh, website. So try it out next time you don't get any help from Airbnb. What do you think, Alex, about yeah. uh, Facebook Messenger versus like on Instagram or is Twitter really your best option in your opinion here? So regarding Airbnb specifically, uh, they tend to uh, uh, look into Twitter much more. So they, they, they pay much more attention on what's going on on Twitter, probably because Brian Chesky himself is on Twitter all day. So they want to make sure that, uh, you know, the support shows a good uh, face on Twitter. Um, I'm not sure if uh, I haven't seen evidence of similar things happening on Facebook or other uh, platforms. Uh, so I would say that this is probably specific to Twitter. Okay. And we did have some comments that Twitter is public, the support thread is not. Um, so I don't know if you can speak to that aspect at all, but um, certainly anybody can see Twitter without having to join, I believe. So maybe that's what he's referencing. Uh, so to, to leave them, a, you know, a, a message on Twitter, to, to post something on Twitter and mention Airbnb, you need to have a Twitter account. Right. So, uh, but it's very easy. It's, you know, it, 
five minute process, it may be even less. Um, so let's see the next one. Number five, use a unique name in your titles and keep it consistent. So what that means is if you have a property um, that is uh, listed on uh, Airbnb or Verbo or other channels, or you even have your own website, it's very good practice to keep the name consistent. So uh, do not use different names on different channels. Use the same name always so that your guests can find you more easily. And also because it will help you if you have your own website uh, for those guests to find your own website and book through your website and not through a platform that you would have to pay commissions to. So, uh, and it will also help you uh, as you grow to uh, start building your own brand. So for example, if you have just one home near the beach, find the unique name uh, like, I don't know, The Blossom, for example. Uh, and then when you get uh, the second home, which is in the city, just rename the first one The Blossom on the beach and the second one The Blossom in the city or something like that. And try to keep The Blossom in all your properties as you grow and add more properties uh, to make sure that you have, you know, a brand name that's growing and that people can find you. And uh, most importantly, that people will find you where you want them to find you, which is on your own website and not on the other platforms, right? Right. And Alex, oh, some people okay. actually go so far as to constantly change the titles of their properties, which means you would want to do that on all the different channels at the same time. But do you think that's a vi viable strategy? It might be. Uh, I don't know. Is there a reason why someone would want to do that? I think because they'll put in like a, a promotion or a discount potentially or get creative. Yeah, th this can help follow their SEO. Yeah, this can follow after the uh, the default brand name. So uh, Blossom at the Beach, um, special offer, whatever, or we just added the large screen TV or just adding something after that might help. But in our experience, it's most important in the long term to have a consistent brand. Uh, so it might help changing uh, your titles uh, in the short term, but long term, it definitely helps to build a strong brand. Okay, good to know. Yeah, so uh, number six, keep track of your expenses. Now this might seem obvious, but it's not. Uh, we see customers and hosts every day not knowing how much money they're making. So you might think you're making, I don't know, 3,000 a month from your property. When you're, and that, you know, you're, you're, in your mind, you're thinking, okay, I'm making 3,000. The costs are like 1,000. So I have $2,000 per month profit. You're not your expenses are much higher and you don't know it. And you don't know it because you're not tracking them. So it's very important to track all your expenses. And uh, it's very important to do it consistently because that's the only way to make sure that the prices that you have here for your property are correct, that they're high enough, and that you're actually making money or making as much money as you think you are or as you should be making. So. There are three uh, main ways to do that. The first one is using you know, accounting software like QuickBooks or uh, Zero or something like that. These are usually uh, harder to use, a bit more complex, probably designed for uh, accountants or people that are doing finance. So they might not be the best solution for you unless you're very comfortable with financial software. Uh, the second way, and the, probably what most of you are using today, is just an Excel or you know, a Google Sheet. Uh, which is fine if you just record everything and you can do some simple formulas to uh, sum, sum up, you know, the, the, uh, the sums for per month or per category and do a simple chart and stuff like that. That's fine. That's perfect. There's no need to do anything else. However, there are custom made software for expense management specifically designed for vacation rentals. Uh, we have one, for example, on Hosthub. There's a, an expense uh, module that's specifically designed for hosts, it's very easy, very simple, and has all the, the basic stuff that you need to manage your, uh, your expenses. But whatever you choose, whatever method you do, just please track your expenses. It's very important. Our next uh, tip is about orphan dates. So uh, you might have bookings like uh, back to back, which are uh, no, no free dates in between, which is perfect. If all your bookings are like that, you're fully booked. That's the absolute uh, you know, 10 for everyone. Um, now, in cases where there are orphan dates between large bookings, so you have one or two days between two large bookings, 
ideally you, you'd want to fill them up too, uh, unless you prefer to have them empty so that you can have time to clean the place if you're doing it on your own and you want those empty dates, which is fine. If you don't want them empty and you want to fill them up, a good strategy is to constantly discount those dates as you as the dates go closer to that date. So um, let's say, for example, you have a, an orphan date or two days free uh, two weeks from now. You can go into your, into your, uh, you know, your channel manager or the Airbnb directly or whatever other platform you're on. And every couple of days, just lower the price a little bit. Uh, this will alert the platform to also start showing your place higher for those dates to make sure that uh, they get sold. And also uh, just lowering the price every few days will increase the chances that you actually sell the dates and they don't stay empty. Again, this is only for those of you that do not want orphan dates and you want to be fully booked as much as possible. So it depends on which side you are, you might or not may not appreciate this tip. Do you have an estimate on the percentage of discount you would suggest in this scenario? Yeah, um, we usually see that what works best is just lower the price by 5% every time. So okay. if you're starting from $100 per night, just take it down to 95, then 90, then maybe 80, you know, 86, or just $5 a time is fine, depending on how high the price is. Uh, sure, and you don't day. need to do it every day, just every few days, just go and lower it a little bit. It's, it, when, you, uh, you know, when you change prices on a platform for specific dates, it's a signal to the platform that you're interested, and it usually helps you show up higher in search results. Makes a lot of sense. And on that note, yeah. we did have a quick question about Price Labs syncing with mm -hmm. Host Hub. Can you speak to that, Alex? Sure, yeah. So, uh, of course, doing this by hand and manually is a tedious process. It takes time and you might forget it. So, there are software that do that automatically. Uh, they're called dynamic pricing um, platforms. Uh, the, a few of the most uh, popular ones are Price Labs, Beyond Pricing, and Wheelhouse. Those are the three most popular. Uh, we partner with Price Labs, so anyone using Price Labs and Host Hub can use both together. So uh, when one of our customers is using Price Labs with Host Hub, then Price Labs sends us the prices every night, and then we push those prices to the channels, and it's done automatically, so the host doesn't have to do anything. And what Price Labs does, among other things, is they propose what's the best price to sell every night to get maximum revenue. So. What they do is they look at the competition. They look at the prices that all the other homes around your own home have. They look at other uh, signals like, for example, is there a large concert going on near your place on those dates? Or um, is there uh, you know, something else happening around that um, might mean that more people will come to your region during those dates? And they fluctuate, they change the prices for every day, uh, depending on all those signals to make sure that you sell uh, as high as possible and as much as possible to uh, optimize your revenue. Uh, so uh, our customers, we have a lot of customers actually that are using Price Labs. And uh, the reason they do it is, is because what I just mentioned here is done automatically. So you don't have to go every two days and change the prices like th three weeks forward. Price Labs does that automatically for you. Sure. And the best part is you manage it all from the host hub platform instead of having to log into various different software platforms to do that. Exactly. Yeah. So um, let's continue. Uh, you, when you have a booking with, um, you, you only have the details of the person who booked. So you have details of one guest. You have the phone number, the email, and the name of the person that booked. You don't have anything else. Now that's a problem if you want to start doing marketing to your guests and start doing, uh, you know, sending them offers and may create a small mailing list where you email them every now and then because you have very limited amount of emails. So a solution to that is to try and gather as many emails from your guests as possible. So if uh, your home uh, can accommodate eight people and you have very often you have parties of five, six, seven or eight people staying, try to get all their emails and I'll tell you a, a few ways you can do that. Uh, so that you can increase your mailing list, the size of your mailing list. And when you send an offer two weeks later, like, uh, you know, 
promoting your place for uh, the next the next holidays and have a small offer there, many more eyes will see that. And one of the people that stayed there without being the main guest might have the good time. Next time he will come with his uh, company and uh, you will have more guests. And this propagates and expands exponentially. It's like, it's like a tree that branches out. So you start with one party that stays at your place and that immediately becomes five new parties or companies that come to stay, to stay at your place. So how, can, how to uh, gather all those emails? So you, know, you can't go around with a small block and start asking people to just write their names down or uh, you, don't, you cannot ask the main host, please give me the emails of all your guests, of all your, uh, the people that are staying with you. So a good way to do it is using software. So for example, there's a company called Stayfy. I'm not sure if you've heard of them. So what Stayfy does is they have, uh, they send you a router that, they're, that you put in your, uh, in your home, uh, an access point, a Wi-Fi access point that has their own software on. So when your guests try to log on to the Wi-Fi, instead of you having to give everyone the Wi-Fi password, it's an open uh, network. They just click and they log in directly. And the system asks them for their email to let them surf. So they just give their email and then the Wi-Fi is open for them and they, they can start uh, surfing the web and sending emails and whatever else. And it's very easy and seamless and a lot of people use it. And it's the best way uh, I know for you to gather the emails of all your guests. Stateify is a great option, absolutely. And they are a, a great supporter of Astro as well. Um, I'm not familiar with any other companies that do a similar service to help collect email addresses. Are you aware of any other? That was a question that someone posted. Yeah, there's another one that I know, which actually has Greek founders, uh, but they're mostly targeted towards the hotel industry. So there's a company called Zootle. So that's Z-O-O-T-L-E. And uh, they have the same thing, but it's targeted towards large hotels and venues. So, uh, you know, like uh, either cafeterias, hotels, or uh, venues. Uh, but I haven't seen them enter the uh, SDR space yet. Okay, we'll try and post a link for that if anybody else wants to research further. So thanks cool. for that info. So let's go to tip number nine. Don't ask for deposits, use cost insurance programs. So what I mean by that is we constantly see uh, very often um, customers in our portfolio that are requesting a security deposit uh, for a stay. So Airbnb has its own security deposit system and they, they will uh, reimburse you for damages if you prove that there were damages and there's a process that you have to follow. But you can also add your own uh, security deposit inside your uh, listing on Airbnb. So the people that ask for, I don't know, $500 security deposit for bookings from any channel, uh, they might feel safer that if something goes wrong, at least I have a $500 security deposit. However, what the problem is, it lowers conversion rates. So it will, um, in many instances, it will help uh, the guests that are looking for your property when they see that there's a security deposit, they will just leave. So imagine the scenario, you're, you're on, uh, on Airbnb or on Verbo, you're looking at homes, you find a home you like a lot, you like the picture, you like the price, you just click to book it. And when you click to book it, you, you're presented with a, the list, you know, the breakdown of the price. And inside the breakdown, it's a security deposit of $500. Now, when you see that, you're like, why should I, you know, it, uh, pay $500, which I might not get back. I don't even know the host. He might, you know, um, uh, be a bad actor and say that I did damage in his home that I didn't. So you'll just click back and go to the next home on the list and try to find the next one that doesn't ask for a security deposit. And that means that our, our host just lost the booking. So there are ways to avoid that. And what we suggest is do not ask for a security deposit. Instead, use a host insurance program. And uh, there are a bunch of them. The, a few that I know of are super hot, pickle or proper. And what they do is uh, for a very small uh, nightly amount, so like, I don't know, maybe a dollar or two per night, uh, they will cover your home for damages or theft for a, a, an amount even larger than the one that Airbnb covers. I think some of them go up to $5 million uh, per stay. So um, try them out. Just Google host insurance program. You'll find a bunch of them. 
Uh, and we actually partner with Superhog. So if you're using Hoscap as your software, we send the data that, that Superhog needs to uh, actually validate every booking. And they also have a guest screening software and a, guest, a database of guests that they can use to screen and rate your guests and a bunch of other stuff. So don't use, don't ask for deposits because they will lower your conversion rate. And the nice thing I've heard, especially with Superhog and also Proper, is that the claims process on the host side is very simple. It's not lengthy, it's not arduous. It's, it's really easy to file a claim if that actually happens. And it is a more proactive approach to any kind of damage issues. So I, I fully agree with next one here. Yeah, we've heard that a lot too. So with Airbnb, it might take a lot of time. It might take a lot of pictures. Uh, you might get a pushback from the guest. No, I didn't break that and you know all that stuff. Uh, the host insurance programs like Superhawk, they usually just reimburse much faster and with more, much less hassle. Number 10, and we're close to the end. Um, this one is connected to something that we mentioned earlier. A lot of guests think that the four-star review is good. They think that, you know, uh, many of them think that I never leave a perfect review, so they never leave the top review available, the, the top rating available in the review. And uh, they think that by leaving a four-star review, um, it means that they had a good time and they were happy. You have to explain to them that that's not the case. A four-star review on Airbnb will drop your average. And the, a small drop in average might mean that you will lose your super host status. So in order to maintain that and make sure that you don't drop below the threshold for super host or uh, make your guests understand how important it is to leave a five-star review, uh, some of our guests, what we see them doing is they've made small uh, stickers like the one you see here on the right, and they just put that on the fridge or on, you know, on a door or somewhere that it's easily viewable by the guest, explaining to them how the Airbnb rating system works and what, if, what, they should, what reviews, what star rating they should leave, depending on uh, if they had a good time or not. So uh, we've seen this working and we've seen reports from uh, hosts that are doing this that it has actually improved their average rating after doing this. So keep that in mind. Uh, it might be a good tip for you to follow. Um, Heidi, any um, remarks or feedback on this before I go on sure. to the plus this one? This is really helpful, definitely. The, there was a quick question from the previous slide about Superhog and their mm -hmm. required arbitration. Um, I think one of our attendees is asking, has anyone had a real review or experience in submitting a super hog claim um, in your side of things? I, I've heard a little bit, but I'd like to hear your perspective. I haven't personally uh, used the host insurance program yet uh, because we, we've never had any damages in our property, never had any reason, uh, but there are properties and because our property is in a remote location, it doesn't attract uh, you know, parties or people that want to party. So it's usually just, uh, you know, couples or uh, families and uh, we don't have any problems there. However, I, I have heard from some of our customers that are using Superhog that the reimbursement process was fast and that they didn't have any issues, but this is not something that I have experienced personally. Maybe just going into Facebook groups and Googling Superhog, we can find a lot of stuff within there. Sure. And I've heard the same thing, actually, even though I haven't personally needed to submit for one. Um, the people that I have spoken with that have said it was extremely quick that the payout or reimbursement period was a matter of days once you submit everything and that it was pretty flawless. So, so far, so good. OK, now to the plus one. Now, this this is a biggie. Um, very often I am. Uh, I see posts on Facebook groups from hosts that have lost their listings on Airbnb. So for uh, one reason or another, Airbnb decided to just drop their listings and shut down their accounts and they can't log in anymore. And they won't, and they're not even able to get any help from Airbnb telling them what happened. So nine out of 10 times, the reason is a camera that they did not properly uh, report in their listing. So uh, e well, even if your cameras are hidden or they are not, not even in plugged in, 
you have to report every possible location of a camera, of a security camera inside your Airbnb account. And this is fairly recent, the section where you report the exact location of each camera. So you might not have seen it. Uh, so go into your Airbnb account, go into settings and try to find the uh, security camera section. If you have a security cameras, make sure they're properly reported because any guest that reports to Airbnb a camera and takes a photo of the camera and sends it to the Airbnb support, the support then goes into your account to see if you have reported it. If you haven't, you might lose your account. And there's, it's very, very, very difficult to get it back. It might take months. So, and that's another reason why you need to always be listed at least on two channels. It's not just to get more bookings, it's to disperse the, the danger. Because if one channel decides you to shut you down because of something you did wrong or if, of something someone else did wrong, you might get you know, uh, someone trying to do harm to you for whatever reason. That's why you need to be on at least two platforms. So where, if one of them shuts down and uh, shuts you down, you have the other one to uh, operate and start building on. Because if you're on an Airbnb and Airbnb shuts you down, it will take a lot of time for you to start gaining traction on other platforms. But if you're already on two platforms and get, have bookings from both of them, it's much easier to, you know, you're, you're hitting the ground running and you have uh, more time to, uh, to start getting back the bookings that you lost from the first one. So if you have security cameras, make sure you report them on the correct section of the Airbnb administrative panel. Yeah, completely agree. Diversification on your listing channels is a smart move, absolutely. And the easiest way to manage that is through a channel manager like Host Hub. It is interesting how often Airbnb is dropping hosts and guests lately without giving them any background as to why. And I'm sure we could have a whole separate webinar discussing that, but it is good to know that having your cameras in the wrong places or not divulged is a big reason why people might run into this issue. So thank you. Yeah. And uh, that's it for me. Those are the 10 plus one tips I wanted to share today. I hope they were not obvious and I hope some of them were, uh, you know, off the beaten path. So thank you for listening. I think they were, I learned a ton, actually. They were super helpful. Uh, we did have someone comment about they missed number six. And I think that was keeping track of your expenses, if we go back to that yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, so I'll let you speak to By that. By the way, I'd be happy to share the presentation uh, with the attendees. Uh, I know that you're recording this, so they have access to the recording afterwards, but you can also share the, the, uh, the actual slides if you want to. Perfect, yeah. Definitely a great idea to check out HostUp. I know we're a little over our time slot, but Alex, you offered to do demos for anybody interested in learning more about HostHub. There's a fantastic yes, discount you're offering to Astro members. So thank you for so, that. Yeah, we have a 30% discount for the first three months for anyone wanting to start uh, trying out HostHub. Just visit hosthub.com. And uh, on our homepage, there are two buttons. One say free trial. The other says book a demo. So if, you, if you're ready to start the trial, please do. We have a 14-day free trial you can use to actually add your properties and see how everything works. If you just want to see it in action on a one-to-one uh, demo, a Zoom demo with one of our uh, experienced uh, personnel. Just book a demo. Uh, there are many available slots. It's a 30 uh, minute demo and you can have a one on one and see how it works in action. Wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing all of your secrets today, Alex. They were, were super helpful. We really appreciate your time. And thanks everyone for joining us today. Really glad to have you all here and enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you very much. Thank you for having thanks. me. Take care.